Hey everyone, Jimmy with Jim's Review Room. What I'm showing you today is something unique, something that is definitely not for the average consumer. Some can say it's a piece of art, some will say it's a contemporary lamp, either or, this very much encompasses design with function. Sony sent over their LiveSpace UX product for me to showcase, and although this looks like a contemporary lamp, it's also a Bluetooth speaker. So folks, I would like to introduce you to the new Sony LS-PX-S1, tested and reviewed. Direct from Sony, it is priced at a whopping $800. As always, I'll leave my affiliate links in the video description, click on those links, and they'll give you the most updated prices in real time. But jumping right into this, the glass sound speaker is modern, again it's contemporary, it's something you might see in Elon Musk's home. At the very top, you have a very soft and subtle passive bass radiator, and aesthetically it blends into the product, but when music is going, you can see it pulsating to the sound as audio is being pushed up from the speaker down below, very similar to the JBL speakers. The entire glass enclosure is meant to create this unique modern look, and I'll admit it does look gorgeous though in person, but one word of caution, be careful not to drop this. There's an all aluminum enclosure giving this a premium look and feel with a nice accent of soft and supple leather. Now if you look closely about a quarter of the way up, you'll notice the cone shape in the middle. Look under here and you can see the 2 inch woofer that fires down over that cone that is giving a full 360 degree of audio output to the room. Now my only gripe though with this speaker were the physical volume adjustments and the LED brightness controls that are located under the speaker making it a nuisance to change. Now you can adjust the functions through the Sony SongPal app from your phone as an alternative but times you don't have your phone near you, you gotta flip this glass speaker to its side. Now the LEDs are indeed unique in their own way, Sony cast a finely tuned soft light here resembling a glow from a candle or a lantern. In this shot, me and Adam found this dark stairway thinking it was the best way to show off Sony's glowing light. Now in the end, I thought it was cheesy, but I said let's not waste any footage so here you guys have it. But all seriousness, you can see it's not meant to light up a room, but if anything meant to accent an area. And I'll admit, it looks soothing, smooth, calm, elegant in a sense too. But let's get back to the studio here. Now going behind that speaker, there's your power input, 3.5mm port for physical connections, and the power and pairing button to the far right. There is a built-in battery lasting only up to 4 hours though, and then there's other features to get them out the way. It's NFC or Near Future Communication, there's LDAC audio encoding to support higher resolution audio files, and you're also able to double up or have two of these glass Bluetooth speaker lamps here play at the same time. Now wireless range was tested with my daily phone at the moment, the Samsung SA+, and I was able to achieve 58 linear feet with one wall in between. So to the moment you've been waiting for, how does a $800 beautiful Sony lamp sound? I'll play several samples for you guys, and then I'll give you my verdict afterwards. And there you have it folks, Sony's LifeSpace UX does emphasize a resounding mid-range. With my test, the audio characteristic is either very balanced to at times pretty tame. The best genres for the speaker is classical, jazz, and other such genres strong in instrumental and vocal work. The mid-range is clean, there's no question about that, offering a very easy to listen to, very smooth experience, but it is missing detail and resolution. Now a bass is very similar as well, it's quite flat or neutral, most likely 
due to its small size, and there is quite a bit of roll-off that prevents the speaker from making sharp piano notes to cymbal crashes stand out. Now, this speaker is not meant to personally jam out to, not necessarily for entertaining or filling up a room with audio. The speaker does lack a bit of color in its audio signature to make it stand out. For the price tag, it does elude me to expect something spectacular, but I did find it falling short. The practical side of me says for $800, there's many other better options out there, even speakers at the $100 to $150 price range. But my artistic side, modern contemporary design side of me, the aesthetics, I love this thing and can appreciate it in that respect. Guys, down below, let me know in the comment section what do you guys think of this. I see this in an architect's home, an engineer, a designer, but for an audiophile or even someone just simply looking for good audio, there's better options out there, cheaper as well. So that's it for this review. Again, I'm Jimmy with Jim's Review Room, and I'm here to help you make that purchase decision. You guys take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.